well hello my darlings and welcome back to our channel i am so glad you are here today we are going to create a romantic candlelit centerpiece that will be sure to engage your guests as they bask in the atmosphere you have created stay tuned For this project, you will need some flowers, any colors, any type of your choosing. You will also need five of these eight inch beveled edge mirrors. You will need one of these 7.9 inch styrofoam cubes. You will also need three of these dry foam bricks. You will need two of these 36 inch wooden dowels, some glitter, and of course, some garlands, any type of your choosing. You will also need a piece of felt so that you can line the underneath of your foam. And of course, you will need your handy dandy tools. Let's get crafting. So the first thing we are going to do is take our 36 inch dowels and we are going to cut them in half. To do this, we are going to take a tape measure so that we can find and mark the half of that dowel, which of course is going to be 18 inches. And once we have found the half, we're going to take a marker or any writing utensil and simply make a mark where we are going to cut the dowel. Once you have made your mark, it is simply going to be a matter of taking a saw, if you have one, or your wire cutter, which is what I eventually ended up doing, scoring the dowel, and then breaking it into halves. So here you go, once again, I'm measuring my second dowel, finding my 18 inch mark, and I'm placing a mark there to ensure that I am going to be cutting this dowel exactly into half. Now I'm going to take my wire cutter, and I'm simply going to score my dowel, going around in a circle, repeatedly, I think I went around maybe six, seven, possibly 10 times. <laughs> and once you think you have scored that dowel enough, it is simply a matter of breaking those pieces in half. And if you will, take in some sandpaper, sanding them down, which is really not necessary. And then moving on to your second dowel. Now that we have prepared all four of our dowels, it is simply going to be a matter of painting these dowels a metallic silver. And then once that paint has dried, using our Mod Podge to place our glitter. So to place my paint, all I'm going to do is take my paint brush, pour a little bit of that paint into my cap, <laughs> But take my paintbrush and just with some very loose and broad strokes, not really paying attention to details really and truly because by the time we glitter this, you are not going to see the strokes or the paint strokes underneath. But just continuing this process until you have evenly coated one side of the dowel, allowing those dowels to dry rolling them over on the other side and painting the other side until your dowel is completely painted around. So I am going to continue this process off camera and then when I come back, I'm going to show you how to glitter your dowels. So now that our silver paint has dried on our dowels, what we're going to do now is glitter them really and truly using the same process. Taking your paintbrush and applying a very thin layer of that Mod Podge onto your dowels on one side, of course. And then once you have applied your glue, 
taking your glitter and simply shaking that glitter onto your dowels on one side, waiting for that side to dry, rolling them over on the other side and repeating the process. Of course, once your glitter has dried, if you wanted to go the extra step to seal that glitter in with another coat of Mod Podge, my darlings, you will be more than welcomed to do so. So here we have our three dry bricks or foams, bricks of foam, yes, that is going to become the top of our centerpiece. And what we are going to do now to adhere them together is simply go in with a foundation of hot glue and glue those pieces together. What I just showed you there is you are going to be gluing or placing your glue on the broad side of that styrofoam brick. If you were to glue it on the narrow side, the three bricks that you are gluing together will not fit the top of your centerpiece. So this is very important. Once you have placed down your foundation of glue, you're simply going to find your placement, apply some pressure, and allow those two brick foams to dry in a few moments. In the essence of time, and since we are on camera and I want to show you the next step in the same reel, I'm going to continue the process with the third and final brick, laying down my foundation, finding my placement, applying some pressure, and again, allowing to dry for a few moments. Now, once you are placing these foams together, make sure that you are lined up corner to corner and edge to edge. Once that hot glue has dried on those three foam bricks, it is time to place your mirror on top, which is going to become the top of our centerpiece, the finished top of our centerpiece. And to do this, again, all we're going to go in with is a foundation of hot glue, because as we have been studying and growing and learning together, permanent glue actually eats away at styrofoam so to place this mirror that hot glue is going to suffice by melting that styrofoam and once that hot glue dries around that styrofoam it is also going to react with the mirror and hold that mirror in place so once you have placed your foundation of glue down it's simply going to be a matter of picking up your mirror finding your correct placement and before you apply some pressure make sure you are lining up corner to corner edge to edge then apply your pressure and allow it to dry for a few moments now before we continue with our piece we're going to line the bottom of our styrofoam with our black piece of felt and typically I would not show this part especially for those of you who have been with me for some time however for the benefit of our new subscribers as you can see all I'm doing is going in with a foundation of hot glue and then I'm going to take my piece of felt I'm going to line up my corners to my corners my edges to my edges I'm going to find my placement apply some pressure and if there is any excess I'm simply going to take my scissors and cut off the excess to discard it and now as you can see the bottom of our piece has been felted <laughs> if you will i'm using my teacher's license now that we have done that we are going to apply our mirrors to the sides of our styrofoam 
And I am using some 8 inch mirrors that are going to fit flush with my styrofoam. The styrofoam comes in at 7.9 inches cubed or I should say rather on each side. And so these mirrors are going to fit perfectly. As you can see what I'm doing here is I am removing the little felt pieces that come attached to the mirror because I want the entire mirror to sit flush with the side of the styrofoam and I wish that it will be done so unimpeded by the felt and so all I'm going to do here is simply once again take my hot glue gun put down a generous amount of that hot glue I am being especially careful to pay attention to attention, excuse me, to my edges and my corners. And once I have placed glue down on my edges and my corners, filling in now the middle of that face. And then I'm going to take my mirror, find my placement, be sure I find my placement before I set it down. And once I've found my placement, apply some pressure. Once I have done that, it is simply going to be a matter of adhering my next three sides, which of course I will get done off camera. So here is the bottom of our centerpiece that we have laid all four of our mirrors and covered the bottom of our piece in black felt. What we are going to do now is take our dowels that we have prepared first by painting them silver and then covering them in iridescent glitter. And we are now going to place them in our styrofoam to find our placement now as you see I'm doing here I'm simply applying some pressure and pressing those dowels down into that styrofoam I'm making sure to place my dowels in one on every corner of course equidistantly one from the other and I'm gauging it to ensure that my dowels are going to line up correctly or rather I should say parallelly or in parallel with the dowel that is behind it or its dowel partner. Once I have done that, it is going to be a matter of taking that hot glue, which I should have held that dowel in place because as you can see, it is not lined up with its partner, but placing that glue in the hole and then placing the dowel back in the hole is going to ensure that it is going to be sturdy enough to hold the top of our centerpiece. So here is our piece with our dowels, the two on the right being lined up perfectly and the two on the left, not so much. But what we're going to do now is we are going to place the top of our centerpiece onto our dowels one at a time as much as possible. Once you have found your placement for each of your dowels, you are going to press down to make sure that all of your dowels are anchored equally into your piece. Once you have done that, it is, or rather, excuse me, you are going to remove the piece that you just placed. And pretty much like we did for the bottom, we are going to place some hot glue into the holes we just created. And then we're going to place our styrofoam back onto the dowels. Again, this is going to ensure that the dowels will be able to hold the weight of the top of that centerpiece and it will also be a nice secure fit. So as you can see, I'm placing hot glue into those holes and I'm very carefully trying not to get burnt by that hot glue that is 
ouch, pouring out of the hole. And I'm placing the top of our centerpiece back down on the top of those dowels. Once I have found my perfect placement, I am going to allow this to dry for a few seconds. So here we have our piece, my darlings, that is complete except for our floral arrangements. And as you can see, this is very sturdy. So what we're going to do here now, we are simply going to add our floral arrangements, one on the bottom of our piece and then two going all the way around the sides of the styrofoam that is on top. Once you have made your floral arrangement on the bottom and before you can place your flowers on top, we are going to have to place our crystal garlands using greening pins to give us the illusion of those flowers being encased in crystals. To do this, we're simply going to take our greening pin. We are going to place our crystal garland between it, bend it over the top of that greening pin, and then stick it into the bottom of the styrofoam that is on top of our piece. Of course, you will have to decide what is the desired length that you would like to use. If you would like to go shorter, if you would like to go smaller, the possibilities are endless, my darlings, and the choice is completely yours. So as you can see, I am stringing another one. I'm actually on the phone talking <laughs> to my daddy. So if you're with me in the comment section, say hi, daddy. <laughs> I'll be sure to pass your messages along. But all I'm doing here is just adding my crystal garlands one by one using my greening pins going all the way around four corners of my centerpiece. Once I have done that, I will be free to continue placing or my flowers or making my floral arrangement on top of our piece, which I will do. And when I'm finished, I'm going to clean this up of any glue fronts there are. I'm going to stage our piece and then I will be back to show you what our finished project looks like. Well, here you have it, my darlings, our romantic candle lit centerpiece. Isn't this absolutely stunning? I think I would have to say that my favorite part of this centerpiece would have to be the vibrant yellows, pinks, the dark purples, and burgundy of the floral selection we have chosen to use today juxtaposed alongside the iridescent gem garlands that has punctuated this entire piece. My darlings, I think I would have to say we have nailed yet another project. And so if you have found any value in this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as leave me a comment in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. What event would you use this piece for? Be sure to let me know. To my Danny's darlings, I'd like to thank you as usual and as always for the questions, the love, the comments, the feedback, and especially the encouragement. Please know that none of it is wasted and I appreciate each and every one of you. To those of you who may not yet be Danny's darlings, but who may have possibly stumbled across our channel today, please be sure to kindly consider joining our ever-growing community of DIYers as we learn from and craft with each other on a weekly basis. 
And if you so choose to subscribe today, also be sure to click the notification bell so that you will be made aware whenever any of our beautiful and practical videos have been released. My darlings, <clears throat> before I leave you today, I am going to leave you with the motto to our channel, which is simply this. Why buy when you can DIY? And so, my darlings, my loves, until next time, I say to you, please, please, please take care of yourselves for me. No that I love you all. <laughs> Bye now. Thank you for those of you who stayed till the end of this video for our honor of a dynamic darling today. And that honor goes to someone who literally had me busting a gut with laughter at her comment that she left for me just a week ago. So it says, just lovely, my dear, lovely. What do you do with all of your creations? She asked. Do you have a site where you sell your creations or a storage space to keep these lovely creations? Just wondering what you do with your beauties when you are done. You don't have to answer. I was just wondering. But now here is the punchline. I have no crafting skills, she says, so I would literally pay for your crafts. Very creative you are. I hope you are having a lovely day and have a very blessed weekend. Here it is. Are you married? I do have a wonderful dad, <laughs> uncles, cousins, etc. I've got to get you into my family. You are so amazing. And so to you, my dynamic darling, Kwana Rina Q, thank you so very much for your comment. You truly made my day and I told you just as much when I responded. So the rest of you, please let's honor Miss Kwana Rina Q today and thank her in the comment section for trying to set me up with someone in her family so that she could have me on lock. <laughs>